This is Sway. 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 In the morning. In the morning. In the morning. I'm shaking your body. Wake your fuck ass up. That crust. On the record. Yeah, man, that's a clip from one of our favorite series to watch is House of Cards. And one of the most uh, alluring characters on, on House of Cards, mysterious, mystique, you know, a facilitator, all purpose, powerful, influential, you know, sex symbol, mm -hmm. um, is played by my homie Mahershala Ali. But y'all know him as Remy Danton on that show. And he's here with us today. Yes, wow. ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the show. Wow. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And when I watch him, Heather, you got to understand because, you know, I, I, I was a Hunger Games fan Absolutely. as well. Absolutely, yeah. Um, um, I watched him do all these these big projects. And and, and I, 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 the admiration on my face when I see him on that screen and the way he's handling himself mm. um, in just different scenarios, even the characters he pick. You know, he's not pigeonholing himself. He's not allowing himself to be marginalized. And I always wonder, man, this dude must be a really good dude off the mm. screen, man. And I start doing my research, and I was like, wait a minute, I know this guy from mm -hmm. somewhere, man. What? I know his energy. His energy is familiar to me, man. <laughs> Damn, man, this Bay dude area. is from the Bay Area. Yeah. Oh, from oh, Oakland, California, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Oh, wow. yeah. Town business, yes. yes. HB. Yes. You need it. Yes. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, that's yeah. yeah. yeah, my yeah. I need it. Yeah. Because you know, how do you look, feel? Herschel, I mean, about, how do you, about, the obvious. Do you watch basketball <laughs> and a game in particular? Okay, look, we don't have to go there right now. <laughs> <laughs> and you gave but, me the side hand. Yeah. You kept it low, too. Yeah. <laughs> hey, but you know what? We, were, we, we suffered so long. And I'm talking, like, there's a lot of Golden State fans right now, but I'm talking the Sleepy Floyd days. Yeah. And you know the minute bowl days, days, all these like the run World TMC free. days. Mm -hmm. So you know mm -hmm. we grow up as fans. The Bay Area, the the Warriors are that are that team that galvanized the Bay Area because that they're the one team. Because we got two baseball teams, mm -hmm. we got two football teams mm -hmm. right. for right now. And uh, so you know it's 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 the the Warriors are something we're really proud of. So mm -hmm. you know, but yeah, it it was a disappointing end to the season. But but that's okay. We'll be back. We'll be back. Yeah, yeah. we'll be back. Say something to him. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, different. I got hey, I got, we'll warm up. Another yeah, 10 yes. minutes, yeah. I'll get him. Hey, so well, <laughs> how long did you live in Oakland? Uh, so I was born in Oakland, raised in Hayward. Mm -hmm. uh, I most recently was living in Berkeley, actually, from like 2006 to 2011. Mm -hmm. I kind of wanted to get back up to the mm -hmm. Bay and, and, and just be closer to home. Um, I went to college in the Bay. I went to St. Mary's College. Mm -hmm. I went to grad school out here in New York. So, but you know, I'm Bay, born, Bay, and, born, born and right? born and bred. Yeah, yeah. So, who did you listen to growing up? You know, who I listened to man. <laughs> you know, look. First of all, Sway, you have had such a remarkable impact on my life. Like, I think uh, it's really hard to put in words what what hip hop has done for for, for me. Like growing up, how mm. it still influences me, how it still plays a part in what I do. Um, in in terms of like creating a a, a sonic energy for my, the characters that I play when I make these playlists and whatnot mm -hmm. and how how some of my favorite mu music still finds its way into incorporating its 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 place into how how I look at these characters but but going back like I just remember every Friday night listening to to the wake up show oh, before wow. you guys went down to LA oh. and and it was you know syndicated oh. and all that and seeing like the the Saphir high roll battle oh. and, and going to these shows and Wow. And just the the little segments like when Nas would come and do a wake up yeah. show segment yeah. or the freestyle freestyle battles and all yeah. the stuff that was happening like it was just a remarkable time and wow. and uh, you just played you and you and King Tech just played just a really uh just, just have a special place in my heart man wow. and so anytime I've seen you and, and seen you going on to have the success that you've had and, and see you see you grow and and more people be, be become familiar with with your aesthetic and what you're about. Um, I, I, I've, been, I've been very proud because, wow. you know, I just feel like that's family up there. So, Damn, so thank, thank you for having Herschel. me, man. Thank you, man. Yeah, thank you. I'm, I'm going to go cry real quick, man. Y'all <laughs> yeah. want to finish this interview. Y'all yeah. go ahead. Uh, but, nah, thank you, man. You know, it's interesting because I, I, I see that in the roles. You When I see you play mm -hmm. these roles, and I was like, I like this dude, oh, man. Thank before you, I Before I even knew the connection. Yeah. I always said, man, I like how this dude carries himself because it's hard in Hollywood. It is. Mm. It's hard. It is. It is. You hard. know, and yeah. it's hard to get diverse roles. Right. You know, and you've been able 
especially uh uh what what house of cards you yeah. you you playing a powerful what what does Remy do you know <laughs> so, man, like, yeah. what does yeah. he do yeah you know yeah, he yeah. was at one point he was a, a press secretary before really the show starts yeah and then uh then he he goes on to be uh um uh the goodness uh, is he a lobbyist he's a lobbyist, lobbyist for but, a period of time yeah. then he's his chief of staff uh -huh. uh, you know and then but he's just a major player yeah is what it is and and um uh he he and I think more importantly, what 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 I love about the part was this opportunity to, and it, and it pushed me to grow, um, but this opportunity to be confident, um, intelligent, uh, one who had like agency and access mm -hmm. and mobility and and power, and it just wasn't something that I I that we've seen a lot in mm -hmm. a character, uh, and in in an African American character. Uh, so it was something to to get to fill those shoes. Just really informed me, uh, because I, I take something from all these characters. Like yeah. I feel like you get these characters for a reason. So it, it's something that you need to process in your life at that time. There's parts you don't get because mm -hmm. they're not for you, but also there's parts that you get that are for you, and they're they kind of tell you something about your life, things that you need to to embrace better. I mm -hmm. think you know, and mm -hmm. that's that's a, on a larger 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 mystical level is what I take from it that that every part that I get is a gift because it's an opportunity to work on some aspect of myself beyond whatever I give and uh, to the character mm. shit yeah. all right man damn that's it listen uh, and you could and it, and it radiates when you uh when you're in these characters that, I think that's why they stick so well with right. folks because they're so organic and relatable um Herschel Ali is here uh, we're going to talk about this movie, Free State of Jones. You want to talk with him, 888-742-3345. Like that, y'all. Hey, with your friends, your cousins, your brothers, and your kin. But to those soldiers who didn't know him, it's just niggas. It's just somebody else's nigger. So somehow, some way, at some time, everybody is just somebody else's nigger. Mr. Moses, are you a nigger? No, I'm not. And what are you? Free man, Captain. Why's that? Because you cannot own a child of God. No, you cannot, can you? You can own a horse, you can own a mule, or a cow, or an ox, but you, you cannot own a child of God. Wow, hmm. that's a scene from the movie Free State of Jones, which is in theaters tomorrow. And it's, uh, that was Matthew McConaughey uh, playing the character uh, Newton Knight. Newton Knight, yeah. And uh, Mahershala Ali, who plays the, uh, the slave, former slave, Moses Washington. Yes. Uh, now, this is an interesting story. People, I've heard a lot of, before people even seen the movie, mm -hmm. saw the movie, or I heard a lot of people say, Man, do we gotta have another slave movie? Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. and and I and I'm I'm baffled by that. I mean, we you know, even friends of mine that I think differently, man. I, I love knowing the history and seeing the history, especially when it's right. the truth. Right. And a lot of folks like to sweep on sweep under the rug things that happen in our country that um uh, that aren't too favorable. But all those right. things help shape and mold us into the people we are today. Absolutely. So Newton Knight was a former he a former soldier for the Confederate, Confederacy. Confederacy. And he deserts. And he deserted the Confederacy. Yeah. Right? Right. Why did he did you know the story why he, he Yeah, he deserted the Confederacy because of this thing called the Twenty Negro Law. Okay. So in part, I mean I'm sure there were other things that contributed to it, but what we really touch on in the film is the Twenty Negro Law, which really inspired him to to desert because <clears throat> it was basically a rich man's war. So if you had twenty slaves, your oldest child didn't have to fight in the war. If you had 40 slaves, the, 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 the second in line didn't have to fight. So you had a lot of poor farmers. Whether or not they were racist is, is beside the point at the moment. But they were poor, so they didn't even own slaves. So they were fighting for these wealthy people who didn't have to fight because they had maybe 60 slaves, 100 slaves. So their children didn't have to participate. So they were fighting to preserve the the... The, the South's economy, the way it was constructed, and that didn't make a lot of sense. He didn't feel like that was fair. Mm -hmm. So originally he left because of that. But then later he goes on to, to uh, begin to advocate for civil rights. Um, he ends up becoming like the common law husband 
of a former slave. A former slave. Um, yep. And deeds her 160 acres of land. Um, in the movie, you see that uh, Newt and, and Moses, the character that I play, uh, become allies and, and close friends mm-hmm. and fight alongside one another in in uh, helping other black people mobilize mm-hmm. and be participants in their own emancipation and in the democratic process, like really participating in and working to register people to vote. Mm-hmm. Um, because look, we deal with voter suppression today. Yeah. So imagine then when voter suppression today are our little quirky laws that are that are set up where like I need to see your ID and a lot of people don't have proper uh, yeah. license and IDs. Back then, voter suppression was being lynched or being killed, wow. you know, and so. And so a lot of that was going on. But in the, the story touches on all that. And what one of the most interesting things about the story, and I'll say, is that so when you when you touch on these Civil War stories or whatnot, they always end with the Emancipation Proclamation being mm-hmm. signed. Right. Like Abraham Lincoln signs the Emancipation Proclamation. Everybody is free. Right. Mm-hmm. Quote unquote. And we go on and, you know, have a good life. But the fact is that there was a re-enslavement mm. after the Civil War. And it came through what was called the Black Codes, and they called them apprenticeship laws. Mm -hmm. So you could just take a black person off the street and kind of put them back on on the plantation, and you'd have to pay for their freedom or whatnot. Or they had to be an apprentice for X amount of years. So there were several things that were enacted, these little local laws, that that were Mm -hmm. problematic. So it's more than just, and even saying this is strange, but but it's more than just a slave story because it's that's... S- slavery is in the backdrop. We yeah. don't really see subjugation in the mm-hmm. way that you see it in slavery tales. So mm-hmm. I start out as a runaway slave, mm-hmm. and you go on and you see someone who educates himself and and has a, a remarkable journey. But it's not really a slave movie. But you can't tell a story in that era in, uh, with the Civil War and not touch on slavery. <clears throat> um, real quick, did and did did Newton Knight go on to help? Um, start a, a mixed race community yes, as well, yes, right? Yes, yes. So in Jones County, in yeah. Jones County, yes. And so, free state of Jones is we're talking about Jones County, Mississippi. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, I also think there's something to be said on how uh, at that time. This is a tr- real story. Like yeah. this isn't. This is a, a real part of our history. Yes. How you know? Because we got race relation issues today that is just got it's just really out. Of, it's almost weird that we still deal with these issues in in 2016 uh but you see people white and black even in that time just fighting for the same cause and that's equality right right you know because there's i think there's always been people who have been evolved enough to understand that this is another human and that there they are in inalienable rights that we should all have yeah and so in some ways yeah newt was ahead of his time but um and on the right side of history but there's just people who recognize what what is right and what is wrong. Like, mm-hmm. um, it doesn't matter what anyone's religion or whatnot might teach. That like, this is a free country, and there's separation of church and state, mm-hmm. and people should be able to have the same freedoms as every other person has. Mm-hmm. Like, period. Like, it's not rocket science. To yeah. me. You know what I mean? Yeah, and yeah. so that there's certain people that are that are very clear about that in in a time when it's it's difficult to be clear about yeah. that because you know. Other people around them are not thinking that way. That was Newton Knight, then, yeah. in a oh, sense. Yeah. I wanted yeah. to add because I got to watch yes. the movie last night, okay. and um, aside from the the strictly white and black issue and mm. and the story that's being told in the movie, there's also a sub story that happens mm. within the actual movie because uh, Newton and Rachel, the uh, former slave that he ended up having a kid with. Mm was uh, prohibited from marrying because Mm -hmm. they said that they actually went back and traced his lineage and they said you have black in you so it's illegal for you to marry Mm -hmm. in uh in in the state he was one eighth a black person he looked completely white but they found out through the census that he had a black uh ancestry and so they prohibited him from being married and they sentenced him to five years in prison no he was already married so it was considered illegal yeah yeah, it was illegal for him to marry so they overturned the marriage and then they sentenced him to five years in prison but then they overturned because they didn't want any race uh problems in the state but i wanted to ask because i was Mm. reading more about the movie after i watched it i read that there were actually uh 
descendants from Newton mm-hmm. Knight that ended up getting like small roles in the film. Yeah, that would be like mm-hmm. extras yeah. and uh, even some of the historians that helped out with the film had little parts in it. But yeah, yeah, there were there were descendants in some of the courtroom scenes and whatnot, like people who were were from so so uh, from the Jones County area that that were that were in the film. It was yeah. cool because when I was watching it and and the, uh, at the point when Matthew McConaughey, who, who plays Newton Knight, when he starts to realize that things are are, are not right and he wants to. Uh, create some sort of a uh, retaliation against the yeah. Confederates. He was almost like Robin Hood because he mm. starts teaching not only you guys who help uh, bring him back to health, mm. but the people in the areas who are getting their farms taken mm. and felt like they're being unjustly because they were getting what was supposed to be ten percent mm-hmm. ended up being a lot more contributing. Like we're taking clothes, we're taking food. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're telling the whole movie though. I'm, I'm, it's I mean, just, but, <laughs> but there's so much. But but he starts to actually. But, but like the way Robin Hood steals yes. from the rich and gives to the poor, he yeah. steals from the army and gives it back to the community. Oh, okay. And starts to teach them how to use rifles and like grow right. crops. Right. And so this uh, this all becomes part of the uprising against what was being done to the people in the area. So right. it's a really cool story. It's not just you know just a war story. It's yeah, exactly. not just history. You know exactly. what I mean. There's exactly. so much that goes on, so. Exactly. DB loves I'm just it. helping yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, it's He a, loves it. Well, but you know, Matthew McConaughey, too, even working with, there's something about him that's, that has nothing to do with the camera for him to want yeah. to do these type of projects. For right? sure. Mm-hmm. What he was, didn't have to, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah. He definitely didn't have right. to. What, and what, what was his reason? Did he? Did y'all talk beyond the characters? Like I think it, he just, I think, you know, someone in his position is just looking, I I think, still to be, to be challenged and to be inspired. Um... Uh, it's certainly not something he has to do for the money. So mm-hmm. it's just about, I think, as an artist, what are the stories that are speaking to him? And uh, I, I I know for a fact it wasn't something that he didn't know about the story, mm-hmm. uh, and it, it was just new information to him, and he felt like it was something that really deserved deserved its own voice and, mm-hmm. and deserved to be a film and, and signed on and, and got to... You know, developed this character with Gary, uh, Gary Ross, who directed it. So, um, so yeah, I, I think he was just inspired by by Newt's Newt's journey. You remember he did a Time to Kill, which was a pretty impactful movie yeah. at the time when that yeah. came out. So yeah. I think yeah. he kind of likes gravitating towards these deep stories that are more than just action movies or something mm-hmm. like yeah. that. You know what I mean? I think and, he, and just, he got the accent down pack too. The southern. <laughs> he looked like he didn't wash his ass yeah. for a long yeah. time. Yeah. By the yeah. way, oh, man, did you look at his oh, ass? Or you just, no, his just, teeth oh, were oh, like oh, brown. Okay. You know what I mean? <laughs> like the beard was funky. He was living in the swamps and shit. You know, it was just, he really got into it. You know, Marshall, I was intrigued earlier when you were talking about how when you're uh, portraying a character, it's not just about, okay, just being in the movie, receiving Mm. the check, but you see a parallel to life. And Mm. you're looking at this movie as a bridge to an epiphany or something that's missing in your own life. Mm. So what did Moses bring you? That's a great question. Um, I think, well, one thing Moses really did for me was I had always had this desire to connect in some way with and it might sound even trite or corny to say, but I've always kind of wanted to connect with with my ancestors in some way, shape, or form, because and and get to embody and fill those shoes that that um, that there's rights that I have today that I take for granted that mm-hmm. a lot of people lived and died for, you know. And so there there was that aspect of it, but I really appreciated Moses's courage and. You know, we're not in positions today where we we don't have to have that degree of courage. We just don't. There's no fear of you. My grandmother was telling me, uh, I was talking to my grandmother a couple weeks back, Mm -hmm. and she told she told me that. uh, So she was lived in Alameda. Oh, Alameda. Yeah, yeah. she grown. That's across the bridge from Oakland. Yeah, right right next to Oakland. Thank you for the geography. (laughs) (laughs) And she told me that she just said off the cuff, like just straight up off the cuff. She goes, "Oh yeah, when mother died." I heard um, on the radio, and I have no idea why she was on the, her mother, they were talking about it on the radio, but she said, when when mother died, yeah, I heard she was a communist. And I was, and and she went on to start talking about, I was like, wait, 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 hold up, hold up, you, you heard what, grandma? Mm-hmm. She said, yeah, they said she was a communist. And I was like, what do you mean? She goes, no, she wasn't a communist, but that's what they said about when black people and white people work together, they didn't want you working together. So they would say things like, you're a communist. And my grandfather, my great grandfather, excuse me, my so my grand, my grandmother's father, after her mother died, they said she was a communist because she was working in the civil rights movement to some degree. And then they said the same thing about my great grandfather and he got fired 
from uh, uh, working at the Oakland Alameda Naval Base. Really? So he had four daughters who he was raising uh-huh. on his own. His wife passes away. They say she's a communist. They said he was a communist, so he loses his job, and he's got four kids. Mm -hmm. And so when you look at some of the things that our people have had to endure over the course, and this is not that long ago, that had to endure it, it... I, we don't have to have that same degree of courage that they did because the as high as the stakes still are, for yeah. sure, and I'm not trying to belittle anyone's struggle f- by any means, but look, I could vote and I'm not going to be lynched. Mm-hmm. You know, There yeah. were tens of thousands of African Americans lynched in the early 1870s for trying to register to vote, right. yeah. So, which would equate to like a million some odd people. Can you imagine if there were yeah. like a million brothers like that were just lynched because they were they trying to, try like to that, vote. you know. So we're in a different time for sure. There has been progress, but I think I connect, connecting to uh, wanting to draw from his courage in, in some way, shape, or form. We Beautiful. got Keith on the line from D.C. Real quick, Keith, we only got so much time. Yo, Keith. What you like to say? Hey, my man, I've been looking for you. You still got my baseball glove? <laughs> Keith. <laughs> Who that? Yeah. From Hayward High. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yes, yeah. brother. <laughs> Is this for real? Oh, snap. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I might have that glove, brother. <laughs> You know that case straight from the Oakland A. That right? is funny. Oh my god. Keith went goodness. to high school with you, right? That yes, yeah. he went to high weren't you like a ball boy for the A's or something? Yeah, I, I was a bad boy in eighty nine. That's why I got the World Series ring. That is hilarious. Wow. Peace, wow. brother. Wow. It's yeah. been like I ain't gonna say how long it's been, but it's been a long time. Yo. Wow, Keith. Peace, man. Keith, uh hit him up on social <laughs> media. Yeah, back, yeah. He, 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 he hit me up, brother. <laughs> It's Mahershala <laughs> Ali. Hit him up, all right, Keith? Yeah, I got you. All right, oh, my man. man. Uh, we got uh, I just wanted to do that to you. But uh, Thank you. From, from Philly, we got uh, A on the line. Real quick, real quick comment, A. Go ahead. Yo, what's up, Sway? How you doing, man? What's up? Say hello to Mahershala Ali. Real quick comment, though. Go ahead. He got to go. Yo, what's up? Peace, Hey, brother. man, I, I'm sorry, but uh, I'm, I'm one of those type of guys that's not really too fond of all these new slavery movies that's coming out. Got gotcha. I mean, I know you guys talk about, it's about history and stuff like that, but there's always two sides to every coin. Like, they always show us at our worst. Like, they never mm. bring out movies about kings and queens of Africa, and if they do, they got white white faces playing the kings and stuff understood, like that. Understood, understood. I mean, same as, like, Africa. Like, they show you pictures of Africa, like, oh, a starving, poor country, all stuff. So Africa is one of the most beautiful places on the planet. That's mm-hmm. they real. Never, they never... They never show the true aspect of it, so it's like, when and that and that's going, a, and, I, and that's a problem. I mean, you know, that's a problem. I think it needs to be just in how things are are told. It needs to be more diverse. It would be wonderful if they told a story about Egypt and like someone of color got to play an Egyptian. Like that'd be great. That would actually look like the people in the pyramids. Yeah, like that would be awesome. Um, so I agree with you, but also I would say that if you see. Free State of Jones, for instance, you will see a character like, so I play Moses, who is someone who educates himself. So you see a brother who goes on to participate in, in, and be a leader in in the in 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 the in the democratic move in the democratic process so Mm. um getting to see someone like that what i appreciated about this character is what you got to see someone doing something that you haven't really seen in other films that that dive into slavery so but i do respect and appreciate what you're saying and i but but it is a part of our history and last thing i'll say is there haven't been that many slave stories that have come out really you can't name them you can't name 10 i promise you you can't and but there have been so if you say the last hundred movies of, that have come out and say maybe there are there perhaps maybe five, and I'm talking about black centric stories. Like there are probably five that touch on slavery in some way, shape, or form. And it's just that since it's such a difficult part of our history, when they come out, they resonate and stand out. Mm. You have to think about it in a way. You don't have look. I love dope. I saw the movie dope. Dope is amazing. Yeah. Um. Uh. But you don't. You're not going to process it. And it's not going to challenge you in the same way that this film challenges you because it doesn't make everyone uncomfortable. Right. Yeah. So that's the thing with these stories that that it feels like more of them are coming out than than what there are. Mm. Hey, hey, check this out, man. Um, why don't you see the film, right? It's coming out tomorrow. Yeah. Call us Monday morning, or, or uh, yeah, call us Monday morning, and tell us how you felt about the film because 
One of the things I like about these stories, because these stories are, are representative of our forefathers, our ancestors, and what they had to go through for us to be where we are today, benefiting from it. And I just think it does. It's pay, it pays homage to their strength, their resilience, um, their struggle, um, and their perseverance. And it's who we are today. So that's why I like, I don't mind these yeah. shows, man. Yeah. Um, thank you for your call, man. Thank Mahershala you, Ali, man. Yeah, man. Pleasure. My brother, man. Absolute pleasure, okay. man. We about to yes. stay connected. Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. I would love that. All right. All right. Man. Continue all right. success, all right? Thank you, brother. Absolutely. Um, up next, we got another actress uh, coming up, Elle Fanning. She's in a new movie, The Neon mm-hmm. Demon. Sway in the morning, Shade 45. It's Sway in the morning. Only on Shade 45.